This episode, we're going to talk about the best celebratory cigars, and it might not be what you think. Not every celebration calls for you to take out your most vintage Cuban or your super rare and limited release, so stay tuned for more. This is a Security Weekly production. Welcome, everyone, to Stogie Geek Shorts. I'm your host, Paul Sidorian, broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island on the lines via Skype. Mr. Will Cooper is with us. Welcome, Will. Hey, greetings, Paul. And we're talking about celebratory cigars. Um, Really, this segment came from the fact that my wife literally just gave birth to our third son uh, this past Tuesday. So uh, it was time to talk about celebratory cigars. Now, we'll talk more, I think, on the show, Will, about, you know, when you have a baby kind of cigar topic. But I got to thinking about about, um, celebratory cigars. And you have to understand who you're celebrating and what you're celebrating to choose the right cigar. And so here's the scenario, right? Like, let's say I was with a bunch of my friends and family and they wanted to celebrate and have a cigar for whatever reason. I'm probably not going to go reach in my humidor and find my most rarest Cuban or my most aged Opus X cigar and hand them out to all my friends and family, right? Because not everyone's a geeky cigar smoker like we are. And the worst, you know, the worst thing that can happen is they take a couple of puffs and they put it down. And, you know, there's a cigar that was either really expensive or one that you really had to seek out. They don't make anymore. It's been aging in the humidor for five or 10 years. So um, I wanted to put that out there that that's kind of like a big, a big note about this segment is I want to talk about kind of like more regularly available cigars, um, that well, I wanted to mention that if you're celebrating with mixed company, more regular available cigars are the ones you want to go to. In this segment, I actually wanted to focus on ones if you're celebrating with your cigar friends, like if Stokie Santa and Will were here, and we're going to light up a cigar to celebrate, you know, the birth of my son. I'm going to break out something really, really good, real special because I know that they're going to enjoy it and they're not going to put it out halfway through. So um, that's where I went, Will. I don't know um, if you have a list or just want to comment on my list. Maybe we can do a segment where we talk about kind of your list for celebratory smokes. Um, mine are kind of tailored a little towards me. So Yeah, why don't, why don't we go through your list because there's a lot of overlap on this, mm. you know. And, and it's kind of funny because I went through the same thing having my daughter get married uh, back in November. Yeah. So you're right. There, there, and I learned that very quickly. Two types. There's one you want to have with the cigar uh, geeks. Yes. And then there's one for every day. And they're, they're, they're yeah. two different things. Yes. Now, at first on my list is really anything Padron. Anything Padron Family Reserve, I should say, is a great celebratory smoke to have with your cigar friends, right? I, I would say 99% of my cigar friends, if I handed them a Family Reserve, they would share that with me. They would smoke the whole thing and appreciate the heck out of it. Um, and I, you really can't, I mean, natural Maduro, whether it's 45th, 40th, whatever it is, they're all awesome in my opinion. I, I, you, it, do you agree, Will? Like, you really can't go wrong with Family Reserve, Anniversary, Special Cigars from Padron, right? No, I, I would agree. I'd also throw in, um, obviously, the Padron 8, uh, 1926 80th. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then you know, I know they're more expensive, but the fi- the, the Padron uh, the Padron fifties as well. Fifties, yep. But they're a little pricey to kind of invest even with that. But that's yes. kind of one favor on your own. Yep, yep. So yeah, can't go wrong with that line. Um, or the, there's really multiple Padron Family Reserve and Anniversary lines that carry the higher price tag. They're just this super special tobacco in those cigars, um, and they're always great for a celebration. Uh, Fuente Opus X is another one, too. Now, these are, uh, so I would call them somewhat regularly available, Will. I think in the recent years, you've seen probably more Opus X releases than previous. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's what I would say the Opus X, which is limited, and then there's the, you know, some of the, the Fuente Fuente Opus X, the, the Uber Limiteds that come out. Yes. You know, and so there's, two categories and certainly they're both worthy of celebratory cigars but sometimes you don't have to go get those uber ones to enjoy just the regular opus x line yeah yeah so i mean we're talking about you know the opus x robusto 
Um, even the Power Ranger, that Triple uh, X, um, Short Bellicoso, um, they make a Fuente Fuente size, which is the Corona. You know, they make a regular double Corona, Churchill sizes. Uh, those are like Reserva de Chateau, I think is what one of the larger sizes. Yep. Those are all like what I would call, they're like semi-regular production, right? They usually come out two to three times a year. Um, if you've got a Fuente shop in your area, you can likely buy them. Some stores don't get as much as others, but I found in the past few years that um, those regular sizes are pretty regularly available. And I guess also, too, if you've been collecting for a long time, when they come into the shops, you know, I buy a five of this one, five of that size of that regular production. I stick them in a bag and I put a date on it. And now I have enough where I would definitely share it with um, you know, my cigar geek friends. Now there's like offshoots of that Opus X will that we've talked about in, in previous episodes that it'll carry the Opus X brand, but they're a super rare size. Like that BBMF is a super rare size. That's super hard to find. Um, so that may be one you enjoy on your own <laughs> by yourself yeah. as I, a celebration. Cause you're probably not going to find enough to, to have to share with your friends, but certainly regular Opus X. Also, we've talked about the Destiny and El Siglio. There've been special lines, uh, in the, um, Don Carlos. So there's been a lot of limiteds from, uh, Fuente. They've really kind of expanded, uh, some of their limited stuff, but I would say stick with the regular Fuente Opus X for celebratory, uh, with your cigar friends. Yeah, in fact, you know, the interesting thing is when my son-in-law kind of came for permission mm. um, to have my daughter in marriage, he brought Opus X with him. There so, you go. Yeah, so I thought it was a really good thing. Yeah, he, yeah. And we celebrated doing that. So yeah, that was absolutely. Um, another one on my list is the Davidoff Colorado Claro Short Perfecto. I was going through the list of Oasis cigars, and I saw this one on here. And I actually went to try and go find a, another box of these. And and I I couldn't I didn't spend very long looking. Um, these are also semi available, sorta. Uh, it's tough to say how available these are. Um, I think Davidoff merchants will get shipments of these in different sizes, in different quantities, at different times of the year, and there's really no regularity to it, which is why I would call it a a limited release and not regular production, right? Um, I think at certain times they've been more readily available than others, but like now I feel like we're kind of in a little bit of a drought season <laughs> for this Colorado. I haven't seen it at a lot of uh, retailers. Um, and I really like the short Perfecto. I also like the pyramid size um, in this one. It's kind of like a, it's almost like a, a Bellico or Perfecto, or not a Perfecto, it's a, a, a torpedo. Um, but they call it a pyramid. It's got like a slight box press to it. It's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. a great size too. Those are, those are my, my two choices. Um, they come in boxes of 10. And again, th this short Perfecto is one of my all-time favorites. When you and I first met face-to-face, -face, uh, we walked next door to Havana Cigar Club. And mm. we were just kind of doing some, some, just getting to know and some business. You handed me this cigar. Uh, yes. And I had not smoked it. So it was kind of like a celebratory thing we were first meeting. And uh, yeah, that cigar is fantastic because yeah. I have not up until that point. Everyone I give the cigar to falls in love with it. In yeah. fact, I think that accounts for the shortage because I've given it to people. And they buy boxes when it comes into the stores, which I think is great uh, that everyone appreciates you know, some of these cigars together. So, But now there's a lot of competition when the cigar especially comes to Rhode Island. <laughs> there's a lot of competition. What I would say is for folks that are looking for this, you know, check your Davidoff um, appointed merchants. Um, you may be surprised what they have sometimes. Yeah. Um, I can't say I know one at the top of my head, but I do find other harder to find Davidoffs just lying around some of these appointed merchants. So yeah. check them out. Um, next one is the La Aurora Cien Años Edición Especial Robusto. This is that little Maduro uh, oh. with the red bands that was very highly rated here in the Stogie Geeks. Um, when it first hit the retailers, I remember smoking it. Just It was just an amazing cigar. They <coughs> released more of these... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Will. They released more of these, and I don't want to say it's not the same, but I think it it was stronger in strength, which tells me it might not been as aged as much. Um, so I bought a couple of boxes. I maybe have a box and a half or so. Um, so this is one I, I really want to revisit, uh, especially as a, a celebratory cigar. I have about a yeah. I have a when these came out in 2013, I bought several boxes of these. I still have like a box or two lying around right now. Yeah. Um, I don't break them out that often just because I don't know if I can get them again and I don't know how good they're going to be. Again. But that original run, I have some boxes. And um, I think this was just one of those cigars that um, 
it's it's a historic cigar in my book. It's one of the best cigars to come out in the last five years. Yeah. 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 Manuel and Noah did a great job uh, blending oh. that cigar, and it's it, one of our favorite. I mean, for Will and I, say we have multiple boxes of a single cigar. We're exposed to so many cigars <laughs> every year. Uh, to put that much investment in both money and space in the humidor in one cigar really says a lot about it. It's not a cheap cigar. It's, I think it's about 15, 16 bucks, too. Yeah, so, for Robusto. But, yeah, but for Robusto, but um, very well worth it. The last one on my list is a Paul Gamarian Reserva Exclusiva Corona. These are great little cigars. In fact, Paul Gamarian makes a lot of the, in the Symphony 20th line as well, makes some great cigars that I like to use for celebration. Um, it's not a widely distributed brand as I would like, actually. Um, I think Paul Gamarian makes some of the best cigars on the market. They age so well. And the two lines that I like in Paul Gamarian is that Reserva Exclusiva. I like in the Corona. I like in the Grand Panatella, which is a Lancero. I also like the uh, cigar I'm smoking today, which is the Symphony 20th. I'm smoking it in the Robusto size. I tell you, this Robusto is fantastic, Will. Fantastic. Yeah, I love that also in the Salomon. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know you haven't smoked the 25th yet. And that's yeah, we're working on getting some of those. I, I looked around this week. Yeah, I couldn't a, find them. It may be a cigar of the year candidate in my book. Wow. So you've smoked it? Yes. Uh, it's one of the best cigars he's done. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, that, it's, it's only in that kind of source size, but I've heard talk there's some more sizes potentially coming down the line with that. Yeah. Um, Reserve Exclusiva is great. I, I remember they, the Corona comes in boxes of 10. And I remember just like buying as many boxes as I could and smoking through them. It's a great smoke uh, and a great line and, and somewhat hard to find too. So Yeah, yeah, they're hard to find. They, they tend to have a foothold in the Mid-Atlantic and the East, mm -hmm. which is where Paul's based. I know that there's some in Rhode Island, um, but they're not impossible to find. Uh, if you kind of put a couple of Google searches in there, you'll come up with them. There's enough retailers that do carry them, so they, they yeah. There's some. Um, there's a couple of online retailers that do carry them, but not like regular. Like they're usually sold out of a size or two, and it's very sporadic when they'll refill their stock. Um, I know Tim Muggerini used to monitor a site and then like go buy a box when they came in stock. So, um, you know that that's one to look out for, and certainly yeah. one where again, Reserva Exclusiva and Symphony Twentieth be my two favorite lines. He makes a lot of other lines as well. Um, but those are my two favorites. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Two great cigars. And I was lucky enough to get a box, which I dedicated to the birth of my son. So in the next 18 years, I will save at least two of those so and share one with him uh, when he turns 18. That, that's a wonderful thing to do. Now, you also, I remember when your second son was born watching the show, you bought a box of Candelas, correct? I did. Yeah. I try and, and now I didn't do this with my first son, but with my second son, I bought the Illusion 888 Candela because he was born around St. Patrick's Day. Right. And my second son looks more Irish than he does, you know, my heritage is Italian and Armenian. So he, he just looked more Irish. So I thought that was very fitting. And I go back and smoke those cigars every once in a while. And they, they're really, really good um, and holding up to the test of time. So, um, and, you know, with this one, actually, my, my latest son, he looks more Armenian right now. I, I don't know. That could, you know, when they're little, they, they, they change, you know, their face. You know, he's still got that kind of puffiness they get when they're infants. Um, but he kind of has that, like, Armenian look to him. So I thought, uh, who better than an Armenian? Well, there was Avo, right? Um, right. Or Paul Gamarian. I thought that um, if I'm going to age a cigar, I thought the Gamarians would do a little better than some of the Avo uh, releases because they're a little milder. But, you know, everybody knows I love Avo cigars, too. So Yeah, that's not a knock. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Cool. Well, um, so, oh, one last note on this subject is be mindful of size. And I, I think we might have talked about this in respect to your wedding, Will. But I want to remind everyone, when you have a celebratory cigar... Like, you're not celebrating cigar smoking. So, I mean, unless you're celebrating cigar smoking, right? You're celebrating a wedding, you know, the bachelor party, people getting married, an anniversary, a new baby. Like, you got other stuff going on. So, you probably want to do a smaller size cigar so that you can get back to the other thing going on, right? Like, a wedding is a is, is good example. You know, the new baby, like, these are people visiting and you're trying to take care of a new baby, which is a lot of work. Um, so, you know, you don't want to remove yourself from three hours and have this celebratory cigar. A lot of people think they should have a big cigar to celebrate not the case go smaller sizes is my recommendation 
yeah, I made that mistake. Uh, you know, Phil Zengi actually gifted me some debonair Maduros that were custom banded, um, and he asked me what size I wanted. I said, oh, Toro. But and I didn't think that Toro was just a little too big. Yeah. It was too long, and probably a Robusto would have been a better size with that. So I've learned from the next time through, yeah, you don't, I would not go bigger than a Robusto, a 5x50 or 5x52. I would not go bigger than that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. So we'll revisit this. Maybe Will will talk about some of his best celebratory cigars. Yep. I think it's yep. an important thing. I mean, cigars, when we talk about cigars all the time here on the Stoic Geeks, right? That's what we do. Um, largely, cigars are used for a celebration, right? That's one of the reasons why people will have a cigar. It's probably one of the most popular reasons why people will enjoy a cigar. It's to celebrate something. So um, it's certainly a topic we'll revisit. Yeah, and, and folks, uh, we get a lot of great emails from people. Send us, send us your celebratory cigars. I mm. love reading that stuff um, as well. So we appreciate those emails as well. Thanks, everyone, for watching. That concludes this edition of Stogie Geek Shorts. Check out the live show every Monday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, stogiegeeks.com forward slash live. And go to cigar-coop.com for all the latest cigar news and reviews. Thanks for watching.